Here's an all-in-one stereo system from J.C. Penney from 1977, or this one might be from 1978. This is the model 683-1770, and it was their catalog number 8530685. And normally it sold for $230, which was about $927 in 2015 dollars. Uh, but in Christmas 1977, it was a hundred dollars off until December 24th at hundred and thirty dollars Which is only five hundred and twenty five dollars in our amount And it was probably a kind of a catalog item that parents would maybe buy their high school students a true audiophile Probably wouldn't have been very happy with this. This is kind of more of a lo-fi than a hi-fi But it does have lots of options. It has a turntable and a cassette player which includes recording capabilities, 8-track player, and AM, FM, stereo, radio. And I think I can insert a little bit of the catalog picture right here so you can see what they said about it. Here's the ad for this unit from the 1977 Penny's Christmas catalog. $100 off from the fall catalog, marked it down to $130. All right, let's look around the sides and the back for a minute and see what's back there. Look around the right side, cabinet, wood grain vinyl on wood products. FCC warnings, antenna connections, two speaker connections. Details, one integrated circuit, 31 transistors, 24 diodes, code C807 and PD7807. I think this is a production date, 1978, July maybe, UL listing. Alright, and there's nothing around the uh, left side more delicious wood grain made in Taiwan I saw this on the uh, Goodwill bidding site and it was local so I knew I wouldn't have to pay shipping charge I could go pick it up opening bid was five dollars um, I ended up winning it for nine dollars so I had the nine dollars and the two dollars handling fee and tax so I have a little bit of over eleven dollars invested in this and why don't we take a closer look at it and see if I got anywhere near my money's worth. Cosmetically it's not in perfect shape but not in the worst shape either. The uh, aluminum has some hips and dings in various spots but nothing too serious. And we have our um, AM FM stereo 8 track cassette play record by JC Penny badge. We have our 8-track LEDs. We have provisions for two for cassette recording. Our 8-track well. We have our change our program button. And we can, in recording in cassette, we can pause. And it does have a record indicator light. And we have a button to select two or four speakers. We've got our headphone jack and our power button. Volume. Um, bass. Treble. Balance. Tuning. There's our function selector. AM. FM. Phono, cassette, or 8-track. We have our dial. So, not unattractive. Let's take a look at the... 
that's on top. The dust cover doesn't have any chips or cracks in it, but there was quite a few heavy scratches that I took some Novus 3 and Novus 2 to it and it didn't get them all out, but got a lot of them out that they don't show up too well on the uh, camera here. Right on our cassette side we have little cubbies for six cassettes that actually fit under the dust cover. And then we have the cassette player, and I don't know who manufactures that. Automatic level control, record, rewind, fast forward, play, stop, and eject. And there's a little cosmetic problem here is that the uh, little eject cover like that is missing. Maybe I can find something like that in the future. So. I don't know who makes this. All right, let's move over and look at the turntable. It comes with a semi-automatic turntable, two speeds, 33 and 45. It's a belt drive. It has a little adjuster for your speed right there. And has a little 45 adapter. And an interesting thing here is on the platter, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's markings for uh, to check your strobe for your speed control for 45 and 33 and a third RPM at 60 hertz. Okay, enough of the preliminaries, let's see it work. And to help out, I've enlisted the aid of my pair of probably similar quality Montgomery Ward speakers. I did not get speakers with this. And if you've seen my video with that Montgomery Ward system in it, uh, where I play the O Johnny O acetate disc, you will have seen these speakers. It's a very similar system except it does not have a cassette player and it has a BSR 3 speed turntable. Alright, let's turn it on. And uh, we're on AM. We make up to 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day. Some animals, S like a goat, start a little band scan of towards the higher of end of the band where I get most of my yeah, so local like AM channels, which is not many. Season, as announced by Jim Delaney Conference Commissioner on Friday at their media days in Chicago. It can apply to life as well, but I think... Excuse me, about the please. Sports and religion channels, mostly. Jehovah himself. Let's go to FM. We have a stereo indicator light. We'll go back the other way. I'm good until that way gets deeper. The people and me is lethal, but King became Rico. Entering the Hot 100 at number 71. That's a classic.
important that we cannot let it out of the deflate gate. I hate saying that. Conducting the wild final movement from the every summer. The Three thousand fan letters a week, and on this. Radio seems to work, FM and AM. I didn't get a lot of differentiation between bass when I used that. I mean, I'll try that on the cassette and the 8-track too and see what happens. But most of the functions seem to work. The lights work. That's always good. Those can be a pain to change. So uh, let's move on to the 8-track. Alright, what better represents the 70s than disco? difference with the bass but not much. Alright, um, 8 track works. How about the cassette? Alright, let's see how the cassette player handles pre-recorded music.
to handle pre-recorded tapes, okay? Rest in peace, Chrissy Amphlet. Can it record? Let's find out. All right, I've got a uh, blank tape here. And she said you might be too young to program on the radio. So let's record a few seconds and then we'll play it back. I don't suppose you can uh, wish for things that weren't on something and you have to kind of appreciate it for what it is, but I kind of wish this had had a, a tape counter. Of course such a low-end system would not have a thing like that. Our record light is lit. So, let's stop and see what we got off the radio. You got a hand full of gimme, got a mouth full of much obliged. Okay, well, definitely records off the radio. Probably would off the turntable too, but I'm not going to do that right now. All right, uh, let's try recording with microphones. All right, I'm going to work with a couple of uh, Ampex mics here. Right now we have one plugged into the left channel. All right, testing the recording of a microphone in the left channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the left channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the left channel. Let's plug one in the right here. This one, so we'll get feedback. Testing the recording of the microphone in the right channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the right channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the right channel. And when you look at that, another little uh, key cover popped off. All right, let's plug this one back in. All right, I have uh, holding two mics, left and right channel. I'm holding two mics, left and right channel, from the old JC Penny all-in-one Lo-Fi system. Um, another one of my key covers has popped off. I have to glue that on there. the recording of a microphone in the left channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the left channel. Testing the recording of the microphone in the right channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the right channel. Testing the recording of a microphone in the right channel. All right, I have uh, only two mics left and right channel. I'm holding two mics left and right channel from the old JCPenney all-in-one lo-fi system. Um, another one of my key covers has popped off. I have to glue that on there. All right. Got a little, some sort of interference there at the end. But it seems to record from the radio. It seems to record from the microphone. So. I guess I'll give the cassette recorder a passing grade. All right, let's give the turntable a try out. Just a 
old uh, sort of generic 33. This is semi-automatic, so. See if it does the auto return correctly and stops. Roll along, stopped just fine. I don't know if you could uh, tell, but there's some up and down motion here with the platter. I'm not quite sure what to do about that. So let's try a 45. Oops, too far. Now you get the idea. It would have played and shut off by itself. That's the important thing. So I guess I'll give the turntable a passing grade too. Although that little up and down motion got to have some sort of effect on the uh, audio quality. All right, well that's a pretty extended look at this 1977 or 78 JCPenney four-way stereo system. I'd say I got my $11 worth. Most things seem to work okay. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.